Hey guys, we're Faye Black and this is a walkthrough of our creative process for the track slugger. We're going to give you a breakdown of the different parts of the track and show you how we put it all together. Hope you enjoy. So we're going to break down the drums for you and our approach to these drums um, a was a different than normal. Yeah, right, really. it was. It's, in comparison to a lot of the other tracks on the EP, so for example, Condemned, it's a bit more clean cut. Um, and precision, but this this was more about if it sounds good, let's do it kind yeah. of thing. So uh, they, it turned out to be a lot more rough around the edges, a bit more raw. Um, it's more this one's more sample based as well. A lot of them are just like uh, sounds that we found that fit the tune, which were like yeah, just a bit more raw sounding. But it suited the like aesthetic of the tune. So, yeah, uh, as well as all the little bits that go. Uh, in between them, so the percussion parts, um, we did a lot of really cool stuff with uh, modulating, uh, you know, pit parts of the pitch um, uh, on yeah. the primal tap and things like this. So we'll go we'll go a bit more deeper into that when we get to the percussion and and show you a bit more about what we did there. Yeah. Um, so we can start with the. I'll play the whole kit first of all. So yeah, as you can hear, there's a lot of layers going on in the percussion section, which we've got sectioned off differently so we can process it all separately to the kick and the snare. Um, and I'll start by going to the kick. So this is, yeah, like I said before, it's more sample based this. So we just got a sample, I think, from like a hip hop sample pack, which had like a nice low end. Uh, and then layered with, I think it's, the top of like an acoustic kick so it sounds like this which I think has probably been yeah so it's had all the le the low end taken out of it so that it'll fit with the uh, with the bottom end of the other kick so the that's the high end part yeah. so the low end on its own sounds like this which it's been more synthesized yeah to drive drive that area so of that's, the kick yeah it's really just the bottom end and then We've got the top layer. So together they make like, you know, more of a complete kick. Helps it cut through the mix a bit. I think they've just been compressed together. Yeah. With this uh camel crusher. Um yes, yeah, so that's the kick really. It's pretty like standard. Yeah, it's pretty standard. But uh it's got the important part is the uh the layer because that gives it like the acoustic that kind of more acoustic sound. And there's some distortion on here, which is actually yeah, just a bit of compression, a bit of distortion. Mm. Um, yeah, so that, that is the kick. So for the snare, we've got another two layers. We've got this kind of the bulk of the layer here. It's like the bottom end, really, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. And then we've got this top layer here, which is the more acoustic y part that kind of gives it a bit more colour and the kind of bite high end, because this one's a bit yeah. this one's a bit dull. And yes. together you get this you get this kind of full full sounding snare. Yeah. Quite bitey. A bit more too mm. And to begin with it was the snare was actually just the rim shot on its own, but it didn't have quite enough uh well just top end really. Yeah. Um but we wanted to the the, the sound of the snare really was like uh based around the kind of rim shot thing. Mm. On the snare, we've got we've got a an Echo Boy that we have automated. Um, yeah. That's here. It's like so a, this is a delay unit that is automated just at the certain points uh, throughout the throughout the track, just to. It's just usually it's kind of a fill. Yeah, usually on the conclusion part. So as it's getting to the end of its uh, kind of motif, I guess yeah. in the track, this will come in. So it like, sounds like this. In fact, I'll just play it on its own. Sounds like that. Yeah, just like a bit of a flutter on the snare that comes in. So that is um, that whole delay, like automating the delay, is quite a theme throughout the track. There's a lot of different parts yeah. where we've done that same thing mm. on different bits, and it's like this a bit I more guess aggressive. One of here. the sonic kind of signatures of the track is having these delays that are like coming in and out and giving it like the stutter effect thing. So we're gonna go on to talk about uh, the percussive parts of the drum kit. Um, first of all, we've got the brakes. So we've got this big library of breaks that we've made in uh, Addictive Drums. 
and we for, for a lot of our tracks we we like take the shuffles out and use those or the hats or just yeah just individual individual or just the whole thing yeah the, like, yeah, the whole the, thing sometimes the, the end of a yeah, section yeah. so they're actually not that frequent uh yeah, they're there. a bit more dotted around. Yeah, bit, bit of decoration. But they sound like this on their own. But yeah, it's just it's a bit detail really. So they help it give it that uh, the whole kit that acoustic sound as well. The main like body of the percussion in the tune, um, we've got this these hats which are from Addicted Drums again. They're high passed again. Just to take some of the low out, the low end out. They sound like this. Um, yeah, that's that is uh, just like a tops like ride layer to give it the whole thing some air. We've also got, I think this is probably just a hi hat loop. Yeah, it's quite it's industrial, so I think it adds to that kind of raw, yeah the raw sort of colouring of the track. Yeah. Again, high pass. Then some of the very tops taken out. Yeah. I think it's quite harsh, but yeah, it's pretty standard hi hat loop. And then this bottom one is a break, a uh, sample from an old tune, the Whitfield Brothers. Um, and this is, again, just to give the whole thing a bit of air and a bit of like different quality. Okay, so it's been like really gated and then really distorted after that. So it gives it a bit like, it shuts off and then it's distorted. Then high passed again. So there's like there's quite a lot of layers in here that are just giving like adding to the top end, but that will help kind of fill it out. Uh, yeah, this the full percussion track. So we want to talk a little bit more about this uh, percussive part here that we've got, which is like. It's an effect that we've made. Um, I'll just play it for you. So we've got a few of these throughout the tune, which are all they're all unique. Um, which is basically because we had, uh, I think it was, I don't know, some kind of percussion uh, hit, and uh, we put a we've got a delay on it, and we've got we're we're automating the feedback, and also after that we're automating. We're using one of the Bitwig modulators on here, which I can get it to yeah. turn on. So in, in Bitwig, what you can do is it's it's got uh, kind of loads of modulators that you can attach to any parameter of any synth. So yeah. you can literally pick whatever random parameter you want. Yeah. You can either attach an envelope or you can attach an LFO or whatever you want. Yeah, so here we've got the just the pitch shifter in Bitwig uh, and we are, we're, we've got an LFO modulating the actual pitch. And it um, so it's yeah it's like a grain based pitch so it's got we've got the grain set to one hertz, so that means it kind of goes in cycles. The higher mm. you, you take the pitch, and with that happening after the feedback of the delay, it just gives it this like weird delay mm. effect. But each time but, it plays, yeah, it's, it's always different. Random. So yeah. we basically have to just uh, do it a whole bunch of times, like bounce out a lot of different variations, and then. Um, just pick the best ones. So, yeah. So throughout the track, they're all actually different. I think. Yeah, different um, different sounds, bounces, rhythms. Yeah. Of that. Yeah. So we got this one here as well. Yeah. And then here, yeah, we've like actually edited the the audio itself. But yeah, they just um, it just helps keep it interesting having them all doing slightly different things. So we're going to talk about the bases uh, in this part. Um, the basis isn't made up of too many layers, but each layer is, is playing an important part yeah. in uh, in the groove. Um, so I'm going to start from the top down. We've got a bass here. This, this is the first hit that you'll hear. This one, right? So this is it's mostly made up of a, a sine wave here. So you can copy those settings if you want. <laughs> uh, yeah. And it's it's going through. A lot of processing, but it does have uh, a quite important thing about it is that it's got um, a pitch, uh, pitch envelope on it, which is so at some points in the track, 
where it's not being side chained to the kick, it's actually a, it plays like a percussive like kind a of kick. Yeah, 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 yeah. So um, that's actually kind of yeah, it's important. Yeah, and then along the base we've got uh, a bunch of different processing. So this this distortion here uh, is is kind of what's giving it most of the character. Before, in an older version, it was pretty thin around the low mids area, but this it this was, yeah yeah without the without the symmetry of the distortion turned all the way down, <clears throat> it doesn't have any of the odd harmonics. So do you want to actually play that? Without yeah, the without this, yeah. So it's really there. all the low, there's a lot of low mid information that's just yeah. not there. So we've got we've got the uh, the bias turned all the way around on, on the distortion, yeah. which gives it that the odd harmonics. And this is what it is with. Yeah. Getting that raspy kind of low mid. Uh, so as you kind of get to the end of the motif, you can hear it it act more percussively. So as a kick, so you see. Yeah. And it happens throughout so actually it's part of the rhythm yeah of the tune so when you hear it when you hear kind of the double kick it's not actually a double kick it's actually, it's actually the bass so if i solo the bass uh, and the drums you can... okay so the next part is um the the part that people may call a horn bass but it's not a horn bass <laughs> Plot it's twist, not. it's a bass guitar. Yeah. Uh, I'm just going to play it without any of the processing on it. Uh, here we go. It's oh, the wrong pitch, isn't it? It's a four, yeah. So actually, yeah, this it's a bass guitar sample. <clears throat> I just that's been pitched up uh, 15 semitones. And um, yeah, well, if I just find it in here, then we can. Yeah, yeah. It has um, one of Bitwig's warping algorithms on it, which is I think it's the cyclic one, which uh, is similar to the similar to, to the pitch uh, the pitch effect thing in Bitwig. Mm. So if you have the grain size low enough and you're pitching it up, then it just it cycles like the same part, which is what gives it the kind of the wobbling. Effect. Yeah. So this is what it sounds like. So yeah, it's just like a double bass kind of thing. So that's how it's got the uh, the kind of modulation. It's not actually modulation, it's just it's the sample's just being cycled. Yeah. And then it, up. it just lots of distortion on it, pretty yeah. much. The last little layer that we've got in the bass section is um, it's like a little melodic, it's kind of like a hook really. It's like it's this acid bass that I made in Surge which is really old synths that not many people know about. I think they've actually, I think they've actually stopped making it now. It's free now. But yeah, sorry, yeah, it's free. they've actually yeah. just given it on free, which is great. Uh, and yeah, it's uh, it sounds like this. So yeah, it's like kind of your classic acid synth sound. We use it mostly for the end of the sections, so the, the cadences yeah. to conclude the motif. Yeah, it helps give the thing a bit of bit of melody you know uh, I think not a lot of processing on here I think pretty much just compression just distortion free. yeah untamed yeah and actually no yeah there's um I think yeah we've, we've, we've automated some of the, at the end of the bars just to like make it sound like it's kind of been sucked into the next bar yeah like that yeah, that's, those are all, that's all the bases. So the sample for this tune uh, is an interesting one. I think um, I found it, I don't know, I don't know, I can't remember how I found it. It was just, I think I heard it, or heard someone talking about it in a podcast or something like that. So I just looked it up and I, I'll actually, I'll try and find it now. Um, can't speak. Oh, yeah, there it is. Yeah, there's one. So yeah, this is a full hour long thing. Let's just snip it from this. And I think I'd just say I'd saved it into like a playlist of stuff I wanted to use in, in a tune at some point, and then uh, this fit the vibe of the track. It worked nicely for the build up. So yeah, I'm not gonna play that full hour. <laughs> um, 
I think in terms of processing here, it's pretty, yeah, pretty minimal. Taking out the low end, and then there's, yeah, some delays and stuff going on. I think, yeah, there's a bit of automation leading up to the drop, so that'll be, I think, we've got some delay. Delay comes in just before the drop. And that's it, really. I think, yeah, the sample just kind of worked nicely on its own. Uh, I think I had to make sure. Actually, no, yeah, luckily it was actually in the key of the track. So yeah, was... same with the second part. That's, yeah. That's actually where there's, there's some tonal stuff that comes in. Yeah. Well, it's and it's actually in key and it works really well. I think the whole thing oh, that, is, the whole thing yeah, has yeah, got, yeah. A, that, got that a tone well. running through it, so it's important that it actually was in the key of the tune. It comes out most in, in that one. Yeah, yeah there's yeah, actually the a part drop. in just on the second drop where. Well, I really wanted to, we wanted to use this like we didn't want to just have the sample repeated again for the second drop uh, and yeah so we used a different part of it but luckily the key was the same so and it has all this other like tonal stuff going the on. flames were all dead at the top of their poles it went like this so that violin comes in at the end of this yeah, but it works with the tube. Oh, nice little lead in. Yeah, and that, yeah, that's the song. So, on this part, we're going to roll it back to the drums again. But we, this time, we're going to talk about the processing on the group itself. Um, and I think, uh, especially when, after, I mean, about like a year ago or so, I was always pretty scared to use a limiter. You know, <laughs> like, you know, you can't, what I soon started to realize is you can't be got to embrace, afraid yeah embrace you have to just limiter. you have to embrace a little bit and just understand that you're gonna have to slam the drums if you want to get it loud. yeah especially for the the sound in this tune it's like mm. just, just you know not it's, about yeah. finesse it's just you squashed know. it's just raw yeah, yeah. so uh, yeah we'll take you through the processing uh, we used a yeah. uh, virtual mix rack we did a bit of compression yeah and then finally yeah compressions saturation and all these units that are in the mix rack like are great for like getting a nice kind of tube sound uh so they're all actually yes yeah, so there's only one that's being driven but we generally use the um <coughs> the pro q to to do a bit more yeah that's some more surgical stuff yeah. which we've got on a mm, actually no, no we no, don't have it on it the, but there's i think yeah just some General yeah, just a bit of color here. adds a bit of color. Yeah, um, yeah, just some there's a few compressors going on here actually. So we got this first one, second one, and then after that, there's a C2. I don't know what the thought Let's process put, was behind no. all of it, but it's just yeah. Let's have a little listen to it. Well, so, yeah. See what see what's going on. Yeah. So this is kind of this. This is here. There's a compressor and then a distressor. Yeah, so there's actually fairly interesting settings on there. I think that first one has got quite a fast attack and release, so I guess it's just helping squash squash it generally. And then the second one, we've got the one. attack a bit slower, so it's helping let some of the transients through. And actually, the mix knob's turned all the way down on that, so that's yeah, like... more parallel processing. Yeah, a bit of a parallel thing. And then the, the C2 that's after that, I think, is just... Just squashing it again. <laughs> More squashing. <laughs> Sorry. Oh wait, so actually the dry knob on here yeah. is up, so again it's like a parallel kind of thing. Um, Finally a bit of uh, exciting here, the top yeah. end, just the top end. Yeah, there's a lot of top end boosting going on in the drums generally, but and then it seems to work. Just to finish it off, we yeah. slammed it some more. That is that's free. <laughs> but it seems to be mostly getting the the kick and the snare and not so much the I think yeah. Fashion. Generally speaking, we hundred percent we would not process anything like this at, <laughs> at all. Like this is uh pretty pretty cowboy kind of way of <laughs> doing stuff. It's just like stuff is just slammed and like yeah. with not much consideration about levels and stuff like that. It's just an untamed beast. But but this this tune start this tune started like a while ago. I don't know, a long like yeah, a long time yeah. ago. So um, this stuff's all a bit yeah, older. But um, 
but yeah, uh, you know, it, all, think, it all works, yeah, doesn't it? So. Ultimately, it leads to the character of the track exactly, in the end, yeah. and yeah. I think I think that's what's important is it doesn't matter what crazy decisions you make, you just got to use your ear. Yeah. Um, and yeah, if it sounds exactly. good, if just it do it. Sounds good, do it. That just is the rule. <laughs> in this part, we're going to talk about the mastering, um, and we tend to do the mastering in the project file, and they. We'd, we could be crucified for saying this, but we've got a, a, a very powerful computer, so it can actually handle dealing with oversampling, clipping, and yeah. then dropping the mastering on top. Um, I suppose sometimes, yeah, sometimes we might do it outside of the project, but yeah, for, we can do it with it. And it's like we want to master as we go along, so we can change elements that maybe get pushed out. Yeah. We always too much. work generally just like with the limit on because you're always going to be squashing it at the end anyway, so you may as well. I want to see how it sounds. Yeah. The end start. Kind of the end product. Uh, so we've got a a virtual mix rack over here. Yeah. So it's mostly it's just catching the the kind of the peaks. So yeah, I would hope that. Uh, yeah. yeah. Just a little There's bit. only about one. That's what the game ducks and going. Yeah, and uh, so the, we've got this EQ here that's adding a bit of color in the 12K region, mm. but uh, I think this is this is kind of where the sparkle comes from, that high end clarity. But also, yeah, there's another Q, EQ after that as yeah. well, which is also <laughs> more high end. Yeah, I think that was probably also in an effort to just get it a bit louder. Yeah, um, some perceived loudness. Yeah. And then we have a multi-band compressor here. Yeah. And it's also, again, just catching the tops of each each band. Yeah. Normally, Peaks. I don't, don't generally use the multi-band anymore on the master, but I think I used to use it to like squash the low end to stop any like low end peaks coming through into mm. the limiter because that could really, like if you've got the kick or something coming through, it's just it sounds really nasty when yeah, it's distorting yeah. to the limiter. But it's better off really just to make sure your levels are all right going into the master instead of fixing it on the master mm. and then we have an eq here mid side this is just standard procedure monitoring mm. out the low end you know so it doesn't have any like it yeah, kind of comes out nicely on a system stereo info coming yeah. out below well about yeah 100 hertz or so. and then we've got something called a standard clip here now this is where we're clipping all the peaks clipping the hell out of it yeah like a pair of cowboys but yeah. uh yeah this this basically <laughs> enables it so we can squash it some more yeah so i generally clip uh before it's going into the limiter just because mm. a lot of limiters don't behave as well with uh, peaks so it's best just to like as you can see there in the red all the parts are just being like sliced off yeah. mercilessly <laughs> without any consideration of sound quality um, but yeah, it helps, it helps it get it loud, helps it get it ready for the dance floor. There's two limiters. Now, limitless uh, it's a is actually, It's like a multi-stage limiter. It's a multi-stage limiter. So we've like, we're just proper going in on the... Yeah, on the so as, you, as you're pulling down the threshold, like if you pull it down very far, more starts kicking in. Yeah. Like you're in series and Do then... you want to just click the double arrow there? This one? Yep. So there's actually, yeah, there's a look ahead on this limiter. So that's that's helping it, um, helping the limiter detect some of the peaks before they actually, before they actually go through the th threshold, which helps it sound a bit smoother and more natural. But also, um, it can cut, it can like affect your transients. Mm. So I think the one after that, probably taking the look ahead off. Yeah, and that's the. I might not. Wait. No, nah, there's a bit on there. So. I was wrong, but that's just uh, it's just limiting it some more, giving it a bit more. More squashing. As you can see in the, uh, the oscilloscope here on the right, yeah. it's like it's pretty slammed. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, and it, you know, it gets it nice and, and loud. Let's have a look. See what see what it looked like before all this. Oh, well, this is horrible. Like, you ready? Tell it, Burma. Actually, it's probably because of our... It's not so bad. Sometimes, uh, so making bad. older tunes, you'd like 
have so much stuff on the master to make it sound good you're trying and turn to patch it, it off and yeah. it sounds completely different but um nah, this one sounds pre pretty yeah. generally pretty my okay. e yeah ethos these days is to just keep the master simple like just some limiting yeah do most of it in the groups yeah just yeah get your groups levels sorted get your levels going into the groups sorted and just game staging a lot so you just not got any nasty surprises further down the line thanks for watching guys I hope you found the video useful uh, condemned DP is out now available on all major platforms if there's anything specific you feel we didn't touch on enough leave your comments below and we will reply peace peace